state grant. Uh, $205.02 WB Mason, which is a refund. Uh, $500 LaBerge Group refund for overpayment. Uh, I think that brings us to the end of cash receipt. So can I get a motion? Hey Kevin. Yeah. The music uh, in the park, does that, does that profit after the food we bought or is that, that just told us? We're, we're, we're actually in the profit margin now. Okay. Originally we had spent, I think about uh, maybe 300 to 400 bucks. Uh, we got all of that back. So we never lost money and we've actually gained money. Um, I don't have it in this one. Let me see, I can see the head. Uh, we made another $80 in food sales um, on the last one. So it's, it's, it's definitely in the, in the lot. Huh? So it's lucky we made that one. Yeah, it's lucky we made that one. Uh, I got a thing, I'll cover that <laughs> later on. Uh, we learned a little bit. Everything's a learning experience, so, especially that first year. So um, we'll, we'll talk about that one. Uh, anything else, Mikey? Nope. All right, so can I get a motion to accept the cash receipts? Motion. By Mr. Bruno? Second. All right, so Mr. Facto? Roll call. Mr. Newton? Yes. Mr. Parati? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mr. Facto? Yes. Mr. Randall? Yes. All right. Minutes of the uh, planning board dated 8 2 of 22. Can I get a motion to file that one? Motion to file. Mr. Newton? I'll second. Roll call. Mr. Newton? Yes. Mr. Parati? Yes. Mr. Bruno? Yes. Mr. Facto? Yes. Mr. Randall? Yes. And then we also have the minutes of the zoning board dated 8-15-22. Can I get a motion? Yes, move. And Mr. Facto. Second. Second. And Mr. Bruno. Roll call. Mr. Newton. Yes. Mr. Bruno. Yes. Mr. Parati. Yes. Mr. Facto. Yes. Mr. Randall. Yes. <clears throat> Department reports. Uh, start right out with Councilman. Councilman. I've got one thing I already asked you about, but I just want to make sure it's brought up. Um, I've had a request to check to see if our uh, meetings could be announced on the fire department uh, sign. You were, you said you would check with the uh, commissioners to see if it's allowable. Um, I can tell you that they've had been very nice to us in the past um, with advertising different things down there at the uh, fire department. So, yep, I will talk to the uh, chairman of the commissioners and let them make a decision on that. I will check into that. I will get back to the And that, that's the monthly meeting? Yes. Yeah, Kevin, on the uh, hiring of people for the town, mm -hmm. have we have any? Have we gotten any signups? What are we doing? Okay. Here we are going into October, and Mr. Snyder is going to need bodies to plow snow. Yep. We can't mm -hmm. tell people we're not plowing the roads. Okay. So um, we've advertised those in the paper multiple times. It's been on our website for a couple months now or longer. Um, we have one individual who was just about there and need to get his medical straightened out. I just reached out to him. I think I spoke to you about that the other day. Um, so I'm waiting to hear back on him. I also told that individual that it would be Mr. Snyder's call whether or not he was willing to wait any longer. Um, because like you said, we're getting into, and that's what I explained to him, we're getting into the season where it's unpredictable and even though I don't expect white stuff to stick for a while, they may end up having to go out and salt in October. So um, we can't keep kicking that can down the road. There is a second application that was picked up about a week ago. Um, this individual will have to be screened by Mr. Snyder after. Um, his, once his application is reached back here, we'll send it down to civil service to make sure that we have he hits all the qualifications. Um, and then Mr. Snyder will interview him, and at that point he'll go down to, uh, we usually use med testing, and they do the, the physical down there. So I, I'm hoping. As far as the other three jobs, uh, nothing. 
I'm not worried about um, the other. I mean, the other three jobs would be nice to get people for too. I'm not worried about be. that as much as he needs bodies to move. Well, I, I will say this: mm -hmm. Sam's been killing himself because he's doing the lawns and grounds, or buildings and grounds job, and he's doing his park and rec shop because Danny retired at the beginning of the year. He would had a little reprieve when we had the summer help from the, the girls that we've been hiring for the last couple of years. Matter of fact, we're gonna lose one of our mainstays there because she will be doing college and working on her regular job career mm -hmm. after that, so she probably won't be back right. uh, next year. The other two, I'm hoping, uh, because they have the experience, they'll be around and we'll, we'll still naturally have that, that summer help there. Uh, but buildings and grounds really is as important <laughs> you know to get things done that we need to do here because sam is falling on him uh, we still have snow removal here the sidewalks that need to be sanded i all i help out you know that and I, I usually end up shoveling this off anyways in the morning but danny used to do all that but i'm not gonna have sam <laughs> what about can we hire seasonal help well that's what we're seasonal help help that position well we did to give them assignments to clear the parking lots Seasonal help for Mike. Yeah. Uh, well, say, hey, you got it through the winter when the pollen season is done. Yeah, the problem is that seasonal help goes back to school. Those girls are still in high school and uh, they go back to school. Um, those the, the, the three jobs positions, the other three. So there was, there's been five advertised. How many times? Uh, at least three times, mm -hmm. right? All summer long. It costs quite a bit of money to put them in there because we have to put it and we have to pay the town price. But uh, either way, we got to do what we got to do. Uh, we talked about um, utilizing a third party hiring um, for and see where we can go with that. The only, yeah, I don't want to you know, say who or whatever or right, whatever, but yeah, yeah something like that, good, yeah. once or whatever, like you said. So, in, in general terms, something like that. Um, the problem is we can't do that for the highway because the highway are contracted employees. So when we hire, my understanding is if we hire somebody through one of those, we pay them at least a year for that employment right. and then they have the opportunity to work for us. I think it was Sheila who said that's how we ended but up. What about posting so. one of these town jobs again for the highway department as winter help only? seasonal winter help I know but if you can't get a guy to or a gal to apply to a first of all they got full benefits up there they they got a, a union representing them they got a, a pretty good salary okay um, and it's full time so I don't know if we're going to get anybody that that wants to do it. Well, obviously we're not part getting part. anybody full time. So why don't we go a different step to see if we can get him some help to for the winter, right. so, even if, if it's somebody that's laid off in the winter from their regular job. Hey, yeah. pick up some extra money okay. here. So, so go by the contract. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here's what I was gonna. That's what after you got done. Um, I did not negotiate or work on a contract. Well, we have two counselors here that did. Councilman did. Yeah, we all approved it. You know. Mm -hmm. so. So they did a good job. Thanks for doing that, by the way, guys. I appreciate it. I know that's a thankless job. Um, but anyways, uh, they had put in an article to allow for uh, part-timers for flagging and stuff of that nature. And it was my understanding, get, tell me if I'm wrong, you guys, uh, that the, the union was totally against hiring part-timers and having part-timers go up there and that article never made it to the final contract. So I don't think that if you're looking at that job up there that we would even be allowed to hire, or Mike would be allowed to hire a part-timer up there. Well, you have a union representative right in your building, don't you, Mike? Yes. Why don't you talk to him and find out? I have. And? It's not in the contract, I know I've read it. It's, um, There's really nothing they can do right now. Um, the first choice is there's supposed to be a union member already you know, for the first choice. Right. 
and there nobody's nobody's, nobody jumps on it. nobody's jumping so that's why with all these ads in the press trying to pull these people in and like we said, I mean there's not very many um, I don't want to step on your toes monkey but we lost a guy for what dollar something an hour more to, yeah to another well, town yeah well, 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 over, over two dollars more yeah all right two dollars two dollars more and and their benefits was more than twice you know, well, that's a big difference, right? You know your benefits I mean? are doubling. So when you're competing right. against other towns mm -hmm. at yeah. what we're offering, then somebody has to have a CDL right. before they can even apply to the civil service position, which is a requirement, right, on civil service. Um, yeah. You know, they're going to go where they're getting the money, and that's what's, that's what's hurting. The, the difference would be if it wasn't another town and they were had a CDL and driving for a private individual, then their retirement might entice them because it's state retirement. And that's usually where we benefited and we usually had people waiting to get in there. Hey, is there right. jobs open up there? But um, the inf increase in rate wages over the last couple of years, I mean, I hate to, I won't say any particular one, but most of the fast food, just to not throw a shout out to somebody. Yep. Most of the fast food restaurants are paying seventeen fifty an hour. Yeah. Um, minimum wage is almost there now. So. <laughs> yeah, it's sixteen gonna be about sixteen something an hour. Sixteen fifty probably. So you know that's that's the hardships that the towns are gonna have to deal with. Well I I'm just wondering what are we gonna do if we don't get anybody? We're gonna have to take a second plan here and do decide to yeah. do something. You know I'm the, the road's the gonna biggest, be taken care of. Yeah. And we, we can't kill these guys and, and work them 24 hours a day. No, you can't um, anyway. I know that we do have shared services. I know that we can't depend on other towns to do our yeah, work. Yeah, shared for services us. are going to be following um, their own yeah. roads. In, in emergency, that's where we would go to first. Say, hey, do you have somebody that we can, mm -hmm. you know, we can work up here? And uh, we'd have to go that route, which I know uh, Mike has said meant to a couple of the towns cool and Peru when they I think it was during COVID when they had a two or three out or whatever and yeah you had yeah. to sit and hey. help them out. That would be the first time we'd ever have to really do that. Yes. It, actually. It's, it's actually yeah. scary at a state and federal level that mm -hmm. the that yeah. people are not looking for employment right now. Yeah. And you know, we'll get into politics up here, but you know, it's it's sad. It's you know that those jobs have been posted almost half a year now, and we still, that we know of. I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not blaming either one of the two that we're trying to get solidified right now. Mm -hmm. um, but that it's taken this long to, to fill those two positions because they are, they are paid. And the other thing, I mean. Comparable I, to anybody else. I hate around. to put it this way, but the, the certain individual that we're looking at is out supposedly with back issues do we want to take a chance of putting him on the payroll and then in uh, three months or less all of a sudden he's out full disability with a back and we're paying disability and working with compensation well right now you know he's what? not it's, an employee so it, it might be a thing not to do <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I can't get into what his medical oh, may i agree may not me neither be. but um, okay. if it is that related to that, that and even if he was an employee, I couldn't do that up here in front of the, the full board. But um, like I said, uh, you know, I don't. It puts us in a hard spot, and we'll see where we go. Um, I've asked Mike a couple different times if anybody's, you know, had any interest or talked to you. Oh, hey, I've, I've been talking to you know a few, and they're all set. But the biggest thing is, you know, no license. Yeah, there were a couple that. Can't work. they, you yeah. can't train them people? Like right now, you, I see all of a sudden all your school systems are saying if you want to take a bus driver job, they will train you, get you your license right there on the spot, right there with the, the schools. Mm -hmm. It's posted all over right now. Yeah, uh, but it's, it's a lengthy, it's a very lengthy trainers. training session. Is it? Kids yes. Still, if they're doing it, you would think <coughs> there would be something <coughs> Do that. In the website. The website. 
I mean, it's been up there for back over two months. Do we get any traffic on our site? Is anything happening there? Is it yeah. um, we are making some inroads on that site. Nowhere is near where I'm happy about it, but things are finally starting to move on it. Um, I have yeah. nothing under me. I mean, there's no minutes, and I that was two months ago we gave him minutes. Yeah, well, when I talked to him the other day, he said all the minutes are on there. I, will have I, have, I went on town clerk today, yeah. and it says no information. Yeah. You got so that 402 I, yeah. whatever error merit message? Yes, that's okay. what I got. And I, I yeah. just talked to him about that two days ago. He goes, it's going to take me that kayak. I don't know if I'm saying that right. You remember how it was remembering the last time you had been to the website and it was putting up the same thing again and when he fixed that he said it caused this issue so he told me within the next two days he should have that straightened out um the work session i don't mind talking to uh, we've got a a couple uh three, actually three i think carrie said uh three other individuals we can look at for our website and they feel like it's taking uh, too long. I, I know we're all frustrated with. Um, Our residents deserve better. Yeah, yeah. I and and they it's... need to be information. And if you look that. on your, if you go on it right now, and even our ad, our uh, ad for September twenty seventh looks like uh, elementary kids. They probably do better. It, the <laughs> two and the seven is is you know the two little two, the big seven. It looks. It's ridiculous. Right now, there's no contact information for any okay. elected official. No contact. No email. Now. There's no well, email for there's, council there's members. There's not or, email yet, but the, yeah. the, the contacts are there. You're talking to the partner. I mean, yeah. I that is that is a discussion <clears throat> that we should have at a work session so that it's not eating up our monthly meeting. I yeah. wholeheartedly agree with everybody. Can I, mean, I just I say one final thing? The same thing. I'll sure. be real brief. Yeah, go <laughs> Okay. The website, the effective website, is what cost us our work session. We couldn't have our work session because it's not operating. We have to advertise on the website. The website is starting to really impact our Wait, government. Can I stop you? It really is. That? Um, that one was on me. That one was on me. <laughs> I should have called him. And the, the agenda was done. They should have went over to him Sunday night. I apologize. That one was on me. That wasn't on him. Okay? I'm a big enough man to admit when I made the mistake. I forgot to send the agenda to Pat to put on the website. And when I got your email or your text message from Mr. Dona's website, I thought that may be able to be handled a little differently. I thought that maybe, you know, he could have gave me a call and said, oh, geez, you know, did, I didn't see the, aver or the agenda. It, that it was advertised, the date, the time, the address. But open meeting law says now you have to have an agenda. That way the person that may or may not want to come down for that meeting knows whether they may or may not want to come down by what the agenda is. But... I'm a big enough man to accept when I made a mistake. That was my mistake. It, I can see where you'd have thought it was his because that website <laughs> is, had issues. But no, that was me. Reggie, but, that wasn't him. But it's been months. That's the point. Yeah. It has enough said. Yep. Mm -hmm. Kevin, can we can we reach out to some of those employment agencies and, and try to do something with them? We can, but anything, right? I, I would caution that we make a decision on what we're going to tell our present person that's been hired and has a contract with us before that we move forward and well, hire we somebody else. Other positions too that are available. Hmm? We have other positions that we could be trying to get filled as well. Right, we have three positions you mentioned. I think he's talking about employees for the He's talking right? about employees. Oh, yeah. I thought you were no. hiring somebody no, no, else for the no, website. No, no. See, that's how <laughs> misunderstandings <laughs> happen. I apologize. So what was your question, Michael? Can we reach out to some of the uh, employment agencies and try to see if they can help? help? Yeah, for the, the three positions Put that... Put down. Yes, and especially like, um, because that's not a union, and, uh, 
um, position, the lawns and grounds, we really do need to fill it. We have uh, the skating rink that's going to be coming out. I mean, I busted my butt last year to, to work on that. Danny Stelp did help. And this man was down there all the time making sure everything was right. So we will need help. I mean, Mike sent all of his guys over for about, what, two hours, Michael? So yeah. that we could put the liner over the top and stretch everything out. It, it, that's a huge undertaking, just getting that, that ice skating rink. Uh, stretched out the, the uh, liner for it and getting that done. So, yeah, um, I'm not against that. We, in the office, had discussed using one of those third party, party excuse me, um, servers to try to see if we can fill some of those other positions. Remember, we had approved a part-timer for the summer, uh, a part-timer uh, all year long, and then with filling Danny's position. So we still have two positions that we should still fill, even though we don't need the summer one anymore because it's way past the time that we could clean up the sidewalks and paint the fire hydrants and all that other stuff that I wanted to get done this year and cut some of the brush back, but uh, at least going into the winter season that we would have, you know, some help. So, yeah, uh, Excuse um, me, Kevin. I don't mind looking into that. My understanding is, is that Carl Weiss sometimes has an ongoing list of potential candidates and he does hire seasonally sometimes in the summer and winter. So the county, uh, he, they may have some. I can reach out to Carl. I got his, his cell phone number. Uh, I speak to him quite often, actually. Yeah. I never never thought about that, but that's a good idea. I don't know what it costs, but the other things, nobody takes paper applications anymore. Everything's done like Indeed, online, I don't know what it would cost to advertise a job there, but that's that's where job hunters look when they're looking for a job. Indeed, you're saying is an yeah. yeah, I think we used a couple of them in the past, but it, it would, probably wouldn't hurt to reach out to multiple. Well, the ads too. do go to Monster, whatever that Monster is yeah, and that's stuff. Yes, we pay, we pay it, it to, you know, and it, they reach out, the Press Republican, because they came out with this uh, a big amount that we owed and uh, they just don't put it local that's what she told us uh, they send have, it out to other tried the agencies sun, the sun can't. paper no, no we because can't because our, our official oh. paper is no, the Plattsburgh press another issue you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah. We, okay. we we made that resolution that in January that that would be our official newspaper or notification um it'd be a good question to see if we could yeah. you know had it in both I think we'd have to advertise them both at the same time. Maybe I don't know how that would work. I, I guess that's a legal question. But I'll Is it still councilman time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Holy smokes. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been approached by several people regarding ARPA funding and requesting a sign once again. We went over it a few times. Would you want me to check into it and see how much it would cost? Just so the board could look at it. They don't want any big digital sign or anything, but is it something maybe the board would consider putting up? Like I said, signs are great. Yeah. Um, they're expensive as hell. You're looking at you know, tens of thousands usually for one of those digital signs, plus a computer to run it after. I know that's what we did at the fire station. Um, this road does get traffic, but it's not like 22 b <laughs> traffic right. when they get there. Right. Um, if it's in regard to the meetings and stuff like that, to get those out, yeah. um, let me see if they're willing to take that on at the fire department and Howard already's got me looking into that and see if well, we can mm -hmm. put it on their board over there. It gets a lot more traffic. Um, I'm only one on the board. You guys can make a, your own decision on whether you want to put a sign out there um, and whether or how you want to fund it to do it. But, uh, um, I know we've tossed this around several times and it was 
cost versus benefit here on the side street. <laughs> yeah, where the sign would be. I know. And the only thing, the only other contact was from a Miss Houston. She lives down south of Albany. I'm from there, and um, that I've spoken with our attorney, <coughs> friend, so I'd rather not discuss that issue here at all. Okay, it's understandable. But she asked me to bring it up, so I figured I would. I understand. Um, so that that situation is being looked at and it has been looked at, and I'm sure um, that we'll hear more on it. But right now, um, being that our attorney's been asked advice on it, I don't feel comfortable. Okay, understand that. That's fine. At a, you had spoke to her as well, right? Yeah. Mike? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, and I spoke to Mike. Understandable. That's fine. So. Hey, Kevin, That's what about a have we ever looked into a speeding sign that came down the hill? Okay, so my, my, I always say my cousin-in-law, he married my cousin, but uh, um, Randy always has been after me for about a year now to get a sign. If you want to look into that, um, what I can do is I can check on a couple different things. I'm going to check with the state and see if they can put one here, because it's state road. What, where is it? Uh, we need to set up the over here. Yeah, yeah no. Uh, Into the it, village. There's been a few complaints. Um, yeah. I'll give you a little background. There's been a few complaints now that the new the new way of thing. It's not very new. It's just that they're catching up with it. The new way that they do the, the signage is that if you're leaving a speed zone and you're entering another speed zone, they put the signs next to each other now. Okay, uh, diversifying whatever or identifying, I should say, what direction you're traveling and what that speed is. We never had at the bottom of our hill a 55 mile an hour sign coming out of the village. It was always on top of the hill. But now that people see the 55 mile an hour zone basically at the bottom of the sand road, they're stepping on it at the old swimming hole area. Uh, you know, basically by Maple Street, and they're trying to get up to 55 by the time they get there. So I think what you're looking at is putting one of the temporary signs up that flashes from yellow to red, letting people wake up a little bit, saying, "Holy smokes! I, I didn't realize I was doing 47 and a 30 or whatever they're doing." So mm -hmm. if you want, I can check with uh, this state road. So I, I, I can check with the state DOT first, and then if they don't have a problem because it's their road, uh, our town, I can all, I think the county may have available to have one of those put up too. But look, let's start with the state, and we'll say, hey, we've had a few complaints. I've I've heard them from. Oh, well, I heard them. Too. It's not that know, I came up with on my own. It was some people asked me about it. So. Yeah, and um, the, I I've heard too my myself. Mm -hmm. So um, it seemed to all start about that same time that they put the 55 there, which it is, you know, legally. But uh, they still are legally responsible to do 30 until they're in the 55, is the way I understand. But everybody's starting to step on it, trying to get it. So it might wake them up. And maybe uh, I did it myself. I know one time I was coming through Ellen or Elizabeth Town, mm -hmm. and I was like, all of a sudden you get that red ding, ding, ding. And it's like, Oh my God! I didn't realize that was going that fast. So they might wake them up. Maybe it'll, at least at the very least, it'll let them know that we're we're trying to curb it. Coming down in too. You know what I mean? Yeah, same direction. You're coming into the village. You're always coming in pretty hot there. It can be at least. Yeah, Here's and that thirty is right at the bottom of the hill, mm -hmm. and everybody waits to decelerate until they get past the thirty. They're actually supposed to be doing whatever speed. My understanding. That's the T law. It's supposed to be. I mean, I don't want to go saying, hey, can we get a cop sitting there Sorry. and mm -hmm. make us quota? But, uh, you know, let's they see if. Did. Yeah, they did. Mm -hmm. But, uh, like I said, let's just see if that might work. Maybe that'll wake them up. And then if that don't work, we can let uh, local law enforcement to take a look at that area because we're getting complaints. Yeah, and I still can mention it. See speed sign. Oh, 
already. That's that on Councilman. Um, highway, you got anything else to add, Mikey, other than what we just pounded you? Uh, well, hopefully we're going to be able to start our paving the 5th and the 6th. Oh, cool. I don't know we had dates yet. Yeah, this is um, it's pretty accurate. Of course, it could highly depend on the weather. Um, if you plan on doing it, remember I told you you'd let me know. I'll try to get the guy to put it on a website, yeah. at least the yeah, town that's why I, yeah, I wonder. Yep, you know so I appreciate I mean? you it's, doing it's, that. Um, I'll let him know for the website. Yeah, no, and we're still, you know, cutting quite a bit of brush uh, and, and shoulders and ditching and still replacing some lot of rotted culverts, you know. Thanks for looking at Christensen Drive with a dead end sign for those folks. Yeah. Thank you. I kind of, I kind of forgot. Like well, that was Mike, wasn't it? Mike had asked that one night at that meeting here yes. a while ago, and I and I didn't tell him when he asked that night. I says, "Give me a call. Give me a reminder, will you please?" <laughs> you know. And then I thought about it the other day, so that's when I went down and got one. And, I think there was two things I did that day. It's like well, you got to read more too. Get your money <laughs> <you're at> you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I said, well, I kind of forgot about them things. <laughs> you know, that's why I say, don't be afraid to call. Okay. Yeah, I'm the same way. If you don't hear from me in a couple days, call me back. I probably forgot. I know, fifteen different things. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mike. Uh, yeah. Water. So that sign is up. Yeah. Not really. No. Okay. Uh, code the safety. Everybody got that. Uh, tell clerk. Um, there's a copy of the tentative budget that everybody's got and like supervisor said that'll be in the notes of interest I'll put it in for uh, the 3rd of October and if needed on the 4th of October for the budget workshops All right, thank you Don uh, assessor I been in contact with him over the last couple days over um, a resolution we're gonna try to pass tonight and that is the um, raising of the exemption for seniors um, so uh, other than having that discussion discussion with him I don't feel that he's gave me anything else that I need to say up here um, we did discuss a possible um, assessment and I think he was looking at 2024 assessment because the market it looks like is just starting to burst after um, that's one thing I didn't know I'm learning here all the time one thing I didn't know is when they do the reassessment they go back three years so being that we have already two high years he suggested uh, 2023 looks like it's going to come down the market somewhat and at least hopefully that trend falls into 24 where it wouldn't Say give somebody that has a hundred eighty thousand dollar house, put them up to two hundred sixty thousand dollars. You know what I mean? Because of the conflated market. So if you guys are good with that and waiting, because that is something that we would have to do. We'd have to have a public hearing on. Um, oh no, we don't have a public hearing on that one. We're talking about that, the other one. But that's something that we we would have to decide fairly shortly. I think he said November in order to do a, a reassessment for 2023. But we can discuss that on a, um, that one of the upcoming work sessions so that we're all set in November if we do plan on doing something in 23. But after speaking with him, um, he thought maybe 24 would be the better year to do a reassessment. All right. And um, I can even have him come if you want that even. Okay. Landing board. I got nothing from God Control. He told me. Uh, our attorney. Anything? No. Okay. Uh, supervisor had a few things before we get to that. Historian. Um, nothing other than what's in the report, but I, I did want to highlight that uh, word has come that Mark Connor, who was previous historian, has passed away. Um, down in South Carolina. There's been nothing in our paper here. He moved down to South Carolina just in the middle of the summertime. So um, I don't have, you know, that's my understanding. I haven't talked to anybody at St. Alexander's yet. Okay. But um, 
uh, he kind of started us on the computer path and and uh, really worked hard over the 10 years that he was part of the, the historian's so office. So if you want to give me some information, uh, we'll at least get him a card. That's and great. And we can all sign it and uh, I could type something up. Okay. You know, I'm saying that we really appreciate the years of service he put in for the town spell. That sounds fine. Yeah. That'd be great. I, I just found out midday today that there is a, okay. an address down there. I, I appreciate you. Didn't that's, want to mention that. Thank that's you. good that you keep me a place. So yeah. we don't want to miss any, you know, yeah, previous employees' deaths. That's for sure. Um, thank you, by the way, for all your help with uh, the music in the park. I want to thank my cold heart and crime here. Um, Howard's been was at every one this year. He helped me set up every one. Uh, I know everybody, you guys had with the airborne stuff the same nights that we were doing it so I couldn't ask you to be down there but um and I do appreciate I gotta say I gotta appreciate everything that you guys did to pull this off and I appreciate the board allowing us the opportunity to have those venues for our town they were um, really well received um, the, the last one before this um, yeah, nice. I was like, I, I've never heard of this group, but they pulled in like 56 people. And you know yeah. what? It was like May 55 and older. So it worked out well because we've had so many different venues that it served everybody, no matter what age group you were in, in our community. So even though I was like, I don't know how that's going to go, it, 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 they will be asked back. And we did ask them back for next year. Okay. Uh, I want to I wanna say that. Tom, all of the venues that participated in the music in the park that uh, it was greatly appreciated and we look forward to next year and having a, uh, a even better year the words getting out now and uh, people are really enjoying it so um, it's nice to do that for our constituents and, and i think they some people hadn't heard about the park either so just that glory was here but i wish i had had a dollar for every person that would that went down there this year and said well, you know this is here this is awesome. This is beautiful down here. How come we didn't know this is here? I'm like, well, it's been open since June of last year. <laughs> um, yeah, the word's getting out. Uh, even, you know, uh, knowing uh, about what the uh, abilities are that we do down there, the different events we're doing, uh, the Winter Carnival. Um, I'm going to throw her out on a bus, and as well as Vern and um, Mr. Prati or Mike Prati. Mike and Vern are uh, willing to help with a parade next year, right? If you haven't changed your mind. For the 175th anniversary of the town. We're planning on doing that. Um, uh, Barb has already started to get some stuff together for our winter carnival that we plan on doing again this year. That was well received last year with the lighted fire truck parade. So, um, amongst myself and those members, we're going to continue to try to do those events and I guess I won't dip into that too much more because again I got enough for my time um, I got a few updates for you and then we'll move on but All right, so playground equipment, we're still waiting uh, for PM Leary, who will be placing our work on his project at his next available opening. I, I reached out to him. He said, as soon as I can get you scheduled, he goes, I already had a whole bunch of work because naturally the, those parts weren't supposed to come in until October or November. So that once they did come in, now he's got to get it on the schedule. So I will let everybody know as soon as that is um, plan on his end uh, I already kind of talked about the music in the park the last music in the park with bootleg was enjoyed by all who attended the weather turned very cool that evening which held attendance down I would suggest moving forward into uh, next year that all park concerts be held in the months of June July and August during the warmer temperature months um, everybody did have a good time that was there and uh, it was unfortunate that that happened to be the coldest day of the year. <laughs> this, this, 
for, for the summer. So it was the second day of autumn. Uh, okay. So I learned a little bit on that one. Um, I've already reached out to some of these bands and booked them already for next year. And uh, like I said, we will have them in June, July, and August. I don't plan on trying to do a late September because again it got called real quick although they did enjoy the fireplace down there mm -hmm. I think they burnt half a quart of wood that night uh, we still made about uh, or we did make $80 in food sales that night so that is sufficient we have uh, been staying above board it's not costing us um, all the all that money again does go back into the venues um, it's noteworthy to say that bootleg was sponsored by uh, nice scoba um, uh, the corrections union for the officers and the sergeants and that did not cost the town anything to have that band there that night they paid totally for that band he is I spoke to him again um, he is willing to do that again next year uh, sponsor another band next year for it so that's a, that's a great help um, that's pretty much for music in the park Okay, we're in the final stages on the splash pad for God's sakes after I don't know how many years. Um, it's been confirmed and we are now waiting, awaiting a review. So as soon as the legislature signs off on 125,000, we can actually start doing work. Actually, I shouldn't say that because we can start doing work now. But if we don't get the grant, whatever we put in it, we put in it at our own risk. Yeah. Okay, so I've been holding off, uh, breaking ground on any of that, um, but it looks like we will now know within the next, I'm guessing, three months. Okay, uh, but uh, that was supposed to, that was a befuddle on their part, not on ours. It was DASNY that messed that up. They never forwarded the paperwork to the next desk up. It is now there, and I have, um, verification by email that we have gone to the last stage so i'm hoping that's all taken care of i was hoping to get that done uh august of this year but that is not going to happen uh nice is working on uh the order to place all the decorative street lights at shane uh, avenue darren avenue and the remainder of joyce have uh, you know up on uh, hilltop estate as stated these lights were to be uh, bought and installed by NYSIC at no cost to the town as long as no special work was required to install them. Um, I spent two days up there, probably two and a half hours with NYSIC going over these uh, on two different uh, days. Everything's been staked at where those, the lights will be. Uh, to light up that one dark corner that we were talking about, Mike, where you got to apply around that back side. Um, it was going to be like, I, uh, he didn't know exactly, but quick guess to maybe about five to 7,000 to put a light back there. So what we decided to do, because the, the electric is on, because it had to bore underneath the road. So to keep the, the, the lights on the same side of the road, what we did was we split the difference from the, the last transformer and the last pit hole uh, where they can gain access to power, which means they're going to trench along those property lines right there, about a hundred and something foot on one side, and don't quote me on the other one. I, I ain't got an off memory, but I know the other one was a hundred foot. Um, it's so much a foot to do that, so there is going to be a little upcharge to, to get those taken care of. Um, the only one that the only other one that I can think about that they're gonna have to trench is right at the corner of Joyce when you first go <coughs> and you take the immediate left um, right across from the red barn basically they're gonna put one on that little intersection right there and they have to go across the driveway and to to get to uh, the closest power supply and then trench about and I think it was 60 feet or something like that to get that light there. I've already contacted all the residents where those lights are going, including your son. I know. And uh, made sure that everybody was good before we went forward with the project. Um, having said that, they're in the midst of giving me a final quote of what the trenching's going to cost. All right. And. Uh, we're still getting the lights and the poles for free and they're still installing them for free. The only thing they, they will not do is we have to pay, they call it a 
a secondary they have to put in unless it's right there by the, the transformer. And that's what we did. A lot of them, we were a lot, where we placed them up there, they were right by what they call a pit hole where they can get access two feet away and they don't worry about charging there for two or three feet of line. Or they were in front of one of the transformers where they could just go into it and they don't charge extra for that. It's only when they gotta go 100 feet or so that they're gonna charge it, trench it, and put the line in. So I'll get you guys updated as soon as I know I ask them for a final up there. There's one spot up there, Michael, where, where they have where one of those pit holes are, where they've they started with a couple decorate decorative I can't talk tonight. A couple decorative uh, shrubbery things. I think they wanted to cover it up to make it look good <laughs> so that they, they didn't see it. Because there was a Verizon Ma Bell stand up um, you know, interconnection there also. So they need about two to three feet of just the scrub brush is grown in the middle cut out of there he said it'll save about three weeks on that project and getting that lights done if uh, i don't mind going up there and helping you and then i'll talk to the resident in front of where that the two there's two it's in the is that on is that on joyce or it's on the back yeah it's on joyce but it, it's where it intersects on right right after that big dog like curve down there it's going to be the first light on the opposite side of the road so um, I got all the addresses and it's all mapped out. It's on the map. So he goes, that would save us from a uh, third party contractor going up there and removing that brush out of the way. So if you and I or one of the guys and you want to go up there, I'll show you right where it is. It'll probably take you about 10 minutes literally to get that wide enough. And they said that if they go up there, they're going to clean out everything because they need to know where the box is in case of a fire to be able to shut off power to certain sections so he goes really they, it, it shouldn't be hidden so you know he goes as long as we know where it is we can mark it but he goes the shrubs can't be over it they can't be having to look for it and uh mm -hmm. he, goes, it, he goes we don't do, do it with our line crew line crews they hired out third person that's another company so he goes if you're willing to go up there and do that it would save good scheduling and everything out and approval about three weeks on a project to get the lights installed there. So I told him I'd talk to you about that. I'm sorry I'm doing it here at me, but it just clicked in my mind. Yeah. So I'll bring you up there and show you it and I don't think it's a big deal. I don't think it'll take us 10, 15 minutes to get back what we need to go. Right. So let's update on that. Uh, work is still being completed on the county of Casella in the town of Plattsburgh for the MOU, the member handing understanding agreement. Uh, to bring the water line to the residents with contaminated wells in the sand road. Uh, things have been moving well, and I hope to have an agreement in place as early as next week. Um, there's still, okay, it, there's four players in this. There's the town of Scarlet Falls, the town of Plattsburgh, Casella, and the county. <coughs> so I don't want to uh, speak for them until I get a solid MOU signed and then I will bring it in here and let everybody know what it is. But I will tell you that I think we're close to an agreement. Um, so it's uh, it's a work in progress, but I think that we'll be there by next week. So keep them positive. Um, reminder that uh, the the, the, we still plan to finish the uh, crosswalks at Maple Street and Emory Street. Um, I know we're running out of time, Mikey, so we'll have to look at the weather. If we can find a, another 60 degree day, we could do one one day and one the other. I don't think it'll take very long to do those two. They're really short. There's still a lot of good days coming. Yeah. So we still, we still have that. If not, we'll be able to do it in February. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, not with me and standing in the middle of the road, but yeah, we'll we'll get that done. Um, I don't think it's a big deal. Um, other than that, I guess that brings us to any unfinished business from anybody. I have some. All right, go ahead, Mike. Uh, met with a contractor at the same garage with Mike a week oh, yeah. ago, um, and I look at the floor doing a quick fix there. To get us through the winter. And I was hoping to have a quote today, but don't have it. Contacted two contractors actually, and only one is showed and, up. And you were talking about temporary just to get us through the winter? Yeah, that's what we talked about the last meeting, right? Right. Um, you know, one thing I hadn't thought about 
I don't know how viable it is. You're the tarmac guy. But would it, could you fill in that first section of underneath that door with tarmac? Rather than putting cement in there and have to dig all that all out? Yeah, we sure could, but it, we, we, we plow, we have to plow on the way out because all that snow, okay. that's why we back the trucks in. So you think if you we put have it to there, drop it, everything and plow on the way out, you know? I get you. you. Can't just it's just a thought. Yeah, no, it's a, good, pouring, it's a good thought. Rather than pouring cement there that's all going to be tore out again in the eyes, but. Why would it matter if we plow on the by tops there? I mean, it's the same as the road, right? Well, it's not. It's it's not asphalt. It's nowhere near as hard as concrete. Right. You know. It's, it was just tough. You know what I mean? Like it's. Yeah, I'm just thinking it's asphalt. That's what we have on the roads, so, though. You know, we we'll plow the roads. Um. Yeah, I'm. You know, I mean, we could try it for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, get a good it's, armor coat. You know, and it's pretty much a belly with it. The tires are from the weight yeah, of the vehicle's exactly crushing it. Is. So the plow's wider than that groove, right? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm I see what you're saying, that it's not going to stick to asphalt like it would stick to other. Mm hmm Either way, even if we got to do that little small section, I appreciate Mike doing what he was doing, and yeah. we'll get the estimate as soon as he gets the estimate. And if it ain't terribly a lot to put some hydro cement in there over the winter so you're not stuffing blankets in there, it makes sense to me. But I think it was just an afterthought. After I talked to you, I was like, yeah. well, well, like you said, too, we, you know, there could be the armor coat, and we'll just have to respect it and uh, see what we can do about, you know, just skimming over it. Yeah, it's better than leaving all the pressure. Yeah, yeah if you drop the, the, and I know it's hard, they're long and they're big, yeah. to judge when you're dropping that blade, you know, and if you could drop it just two inches after afterwards. you get off the, <laughs> you know what I'm talking afterwards. about. Yeah, you know, it, so. it, it you might not even touch it, but, but it's just, every once in a while somebody might skim a little bit off. Where well, you they, they probably ride. more than that because we're <laughs> so used to it. Yeah, it's, right. It's you just common push sense. Way I mean, it comes off the roof. That way you're clearing out the doors. So that's why we leave everything down. And, and then, of course, in the yeah, parking lot, the parking lot is like this. You know, so if you miss that little area, we're going to be into the ditch. Right. You know, it's, right. it's just a thought. Let's, uh, if everybody's good, we'll let Mike go ahead with this. Yeah. I mean, He's got an estimate. Come on, see what comes in that. Maybe it'll be, you know, inexpensive enough that it won't matter that it's going to be turned out. So, okay. just, you know, just sure. let, I don't want to say who it is, but sure. just let him know that that's what we're, we're looking as a temporary just to get it by. Yeah, he understood that. We, we spent quite a bit of time with him. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Right. Especially explaining to him. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other unfinished business? Uh, new business? Resolutions. 